Having a written legal will is important, but more than half of Aussie adults don't have one. Vision has entered into a partnership with SafeWill, a leading online will writing platform to provide you with an easier and more affordable way to write or update your will. As part of the Vision family, we want you to know about a way that you can write your will for free. Start the process now and complete it at no cost during Leave a Legacy Week from February 26 to March 3rd. See all the details at vision.org.au slash legacy. A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, things are currently, you might even say, looking pretty quiet on terms of the political front in the state of Western Australia. But those things that are looming are very significant in other states. Always good to be able to welcome Peter Abetz, who's the WA State Director for the Australian Christian Lobby. Hey, Peter, welcome back to 2020. It's good to be with you, Neil, and a good morning to afternoon to your listeners, wherever you are. I think it's all, well, let's just say it's good morning, I think, everywhere right now still yeah. uh, in Australia. <laughs> hey, proposed changes to the Equal Opportunity Act, uh, this is something that not only is bubbling along in Western Australia, uh, but there are issues and similarities to so much other uh, reform and legislation that are uh, being considered by other states. Uh, what's the latest of what's going on in WA, Peter? Yeah, look, the Equal Opportunity Act um, was reviewed by the Law Reform Commission and uh, back in November 2022, the Attorney General uh, announced that the government had, to use his term, broadly accepted the recommendations of the Law Reform Commission. And a lot of it was pretty mundane, but... Uh, changes, but there are some that were of great concern, and they're very similar actually to the uh, changes that uh, the a federal uh, or Commonwealth uh, Law Reform Commission was uh, making regarding faith-based schools and uh, wanting to limit the right of faith-based schools to give preference to people of faith in employment, and also that if a teacher no longer conforms to the um, yeah, would you would you expect the values of the faith of that school uh, that the school would not be able to terminate their services? And of course, that's a, that's a real real concern. Um, so yeah, we've had some meetings with uh, relevant ministers uh, here over time, but it would appear now that the state government is actually going to hold off making any um, legislative changes until the federal government has actually. Uh, yeah, decide what they're going to do. So uh, it looks like this year um, there won't be anything happening uh, on the Equal Opportunity Act uh, in Western Australia. So uh, we've got a little bit of respite, if you like. <laughs> and in some sense, uh, this is what they thought in New South Wales late last year too. And all of a sudden, it's back on the agenda and headed for a vote uh, in March. So you just mm. never know what might happen because... Uh, they're fairly diligent, aren't they, in the mm. group that is pushing for all of these sorts of reforms that ought to send a shudder uh, into every Christian home when you think of Christian education being at risk in such a way that it is. Uh, but you've got Equality Australia. They're lobbying very hard, aren't they? And that would be happening in WA. Yeah, look, I think uh, that's happening right around the country, uh, that uh the LGBTQ plus activists are quite active in lobbying, uh, wanting to, uh, yeah, I guess, impose their view of the world uh, onto faith-based schools. And the interesting thing is that it's not just Christian schools, but the Muslim school movement is also uh, very, very concerned about the implications of that. Like uh, Muslim schools, for example, uh, because they can't get enough Muslim teachers um, at this point in time they employ um, you know, Christians and uh, other people uh, or people of no faith but they have the requirement that a teacher must live a life that is consistent with their moral values so for example uh, a person can't be openly gay and teach in a in a Muslim school uh, they would not uh, tolerate that and so uh, it, the uh, it's it's not just Christian schools that are affected, it's the Muslim schools and, 
uh, yeah, any, any school that uh, really values uh, or that holds to uh, certain moral values and wants those values modelled by the staff, um, they are at risk of no longer being able to really be that community of faith uh, that we've come to uh, yeah, to expect from faith-based schools. So if the staff don't model the values, uh, it does away with the value, doesn't it, of what Christian education might bring? Because while there might be a curriculum, and yes, you want to stay with that curriculum, but it's the person who teaches that curriculum and the values that they hold to, very, very important. Hey, Peter, uh, what about vigilance here for uh, those that you're serving in Western Australia and others listening around the nation, uh, how do you be vigilant as a Christian parent and when it comes to uh, issues around schools and with the opposition that's coming and wanting to reform all of these values? Uh, what do you do to be vigilant? Well, I think the important thing is to stay abreast of what's happening and people can do that uh by uh, like the, the Christian school movement sends out emails to parents, uh, Australian Christian Lobby, we, we keep people abreast of them. There's other groups too. Um, stay abreast of what's actually happening. But uh, here in Western Australia, because the government has said they're not going to be doing anything this year, that effectively means um, not until after the next election because our state election in Western Australia is in March uh, next year. And so basically the end of this year, Parliament wraps up and uh, then it goes into election mode. So it's going to be really important that we get uh, clear statements from the political candidates and the political parties as to where they stand on this issue because it really should be a deciding factor for Christians uh, as to how they vote. And I suspect it will also be a very significant um, uh, influence of how the Muslim community people would vote because um, for people who value faith-based education, not to be allowed to give preference to people of your faith in employment at the school and not being able to require staff to adhere to the uh, yeah, the values of, the, of, of your faith um, uh, that really becomes problematic. Special honour to you, Peter Abetz, because what I've noticed over the years, and I'm sure your colleagues would agree with this, uh, Peter Abetz is always on the front foot. You know, we talk about you know being on the back foot. You're in defence mode. Uh, there's always a front foot initiative from the Peter Abetz that I very much enjoy talking to and getting an update on things that are developing in Western Australia. A, on front foot initiatives and uh, things that are uh, are also brewing in WA, the conversion therapy legislation. Uh, what's the latest on what's happening there in Western Australia? Look, we really don't quite know what's going on there because the government did commit at the last election uh, that they would introduce a uh, so-called uh, ban on gay conversion um, uh, the legislation to ban that. Um, and the LGBTQ plus activists are pretty irate and they're lobbying pretty hard and using the media to remind the government of that commitment because the government at this point hasn't actually moved to do anything in that space. Um, now, I requested to be involved in the stakeholder consultation process. Um, uh, some of your listeners may not be aware, but the normal way that legislation is developed is that uh, the uh, minister responsible, uh, he knows, he, he decides this is roughly the sort of direction we want legislation to go, but then they have stakeholder consultation where people who are going to be affected by the legislation are invited to provide comment or uh, yeah, sit around the table and talk about um, uh, what what the impact might be and things perhaps to avoid, etc. And um, so I've requested to be uh, to be noted as a stakeholder in the consultation process and I was told that nothing is happening as yet and that was um, yeah, late, very late last year. Uh, so uh, I'm just not quite sure whether the government's actually going to get to do that still before this election. Um, so it, it, it's my guess is that since uh, Mark McGowan is no longer the Premier, uh, the Labor Party's popularity has plummeted and um, some of the public opinion polls suggest that the Liberals are actually within striking distance of um, 
possibly even winning government. Uh, so uh, my guess would be that Labor would be very unwise to pick a fight with the faith communities in the year leading up to an election. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, my, my guess is they're going to try and hold off until um, yeah, after the next election. And if they win government, if Labor again wins government, they'll tackle it then. That would be my guess. But I, yeah, in politics, uh, they say uh, a week is a long time in politics. So you just simply don't know what's ca- happening next. And if there is a holding off, uh, I imagine the Christian might think that is good news. Uh, but others might be saying, well, maybe holding off what might be inevitable. But this is the interesting thing that you just drew uh, significant attention to. Uh, with the with uh, Mark McGowan gone, uh, there's a real weakness now in the Labor Party uh, government in Western Australia. And you're saying that the Liberals are within striking distance. I think they've got a long way to go, haven't they? But, uh, but this mm. thought of, you know, picking a fight uh, between mm. the Christian faith community and maybe include other faith communities in there as well and uh, the LGBT uh, activists. Um, I mean, there's a big support base on the Christian side, um, but perhaps not as much um, not as much further in voting according to our Christian values. This is one of those things that's going to be very important, isn't it, for the Western Australian election if this particular issue comes to the fore? Look, it's, it's really important that um, that Christians really look at uh, the policies or the the stand that the uh, different parties have on this issue of so-called gay conversion uh, laws. Um, like if you look at, for example, the law that's been uh, tabled in Tasmania, uh, their conversion therapy law, uh, that is so much more, uh, dare I say, balanced than, say, the draconian Victorian legislation um, <clears throat> because it, it allows uh, for uh, parents, that, like a parent talking to their child uh, is, doesn't constitute um, attempts at conversion therapy and so on. And uh, the Tasmanian legislation, for example, allows um, if a person um, asks you to pray for them, say to, uh, that God would help them overcome their same-sex attraction, um, in Victoria you can go to jail for if, if you uh, meet that request, whereas in Tasmania, according to their, their draft legislation, you wouldn't. So it really, uh, it, it'll be very, um, um, my guess is that the government realises that they really need to work hard at trying to get reasonable legislation, and that's going to take a significant amount of time. And one of the other factors I think that's at play is that the government's got so much legislation in front of parliament at the moment that uh, if they were to introduce uh, gay conversion therapy legislation, it would um, yeah, it would take up a massive amount of time, of debating time, um, which would... Uh, prevent some of that other legislation getting through before the end of the year uh, when Parliament goes into or is prorogued with, you know, in readiness for the election because then everything falls off the table. So it really just depends on what the government's priorities are going to be. And you've got other states, uh, like you say, Victoria, and I think in the ACT, and there might be others as well, uh, where Christian people are criminalised because they are praying for people who have an unwanted same-sex attraction. So uh, those sorts of issues, they're at play. And in WA, uh, those things appear to be off the table for the meantime. Hey, uh, Peter, some of the other typical sorts of issues that Western Australian listeners might be interested in. You've been following along some of the stats for the hospital system in Western Australia. What does things look like there? Look, our hospital system is under enormous pressure and we've had um, a major problem with ambulance ramping and so many ambulances tied up at hospitals um, that they can't get out to do emergency calls, it's, uh, call outs and so on. So that's a real issue. Um, and according to uh, some reports, apparently West Australia should have an extra 612 hospital beds to bring us up to the Australia's uh, national average. Now, 612 beds, that's a big hospital. So um, it's, it's a massive shortage of hospital beds. And uh, basically what it really means is that there's just been a 
gross underinvestment in our uh, hospital system for, for some time. Um, I can remember when, uh, was it 2008, I think it was, um, the uh, outgoing, at that time, the Labor government, they were going to close the Royal Perth Hospital and they were building the new Fiona Stanley Hospital, which is a, a great hospital in the southern suburbs. And um, the, uh, the reality was there just wouldn't be enough beds if they closed the Royal Perth. And the incoming Liberal government actually didn't close Royal Perth and uh, if that had, if it had been closed, our system would be in total disaster. So um, really what needs to happen is either each of the hospitals needs expansion or they actually need to build a whole new hospital somewhere to, uh, just to uh, give us sufficient uh, hospital beds. And uh, mental health hospitals too. Uh, there's one there in Western Australia that's closed down uh, despite the fact that there's a huge need for mental health beds. What's happened there? Yeah, look, unfortunately what's happened is um, uh, Beth- uh, not sure, Beth- Bethesda, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, it's a private uh, not-for-profit group. They built a, a $60 million facility in the southern suburb of uh, Coburn, a 75-bed private uh, mental health facility. And uh, nine months after opening it, they've announced they're closing it. Uh, there's a twofold reason. One is not being able to get sufficient psychiatrists willing to do the inpatient work. And that's a real problem. There's a massive shortage of psychiatrists in the country. Um, But the other problem is that private health insurance rebates are insufficient to cover the true cost of inpatient mental health care. And so uh, apparently most health funds only pay 85%, leaving the patient to pay the other 15%, which, you know, when somebody's in hospital for a month, that amounts to thousands of dollars. And so these people are being pushed into the public mental health system, which is already grossly overstretched. So um, it's it's a real tragedy that uh, this mental health facility in the southern suburbs uh, is closing down. They are talking with government about uh, what could be done to uh, make sure it stays open. But uh, it looks like at the end of this month, uh, only a few weeks away, they are planning to, to shut it down at this point. And another one that's a little bit amusing, I guess amusing if uh, unless you're in the firing line here, but uh, <laughs> there was an interesting little story that came out of WA about a, uh, a helicopter tanker uh, fighting a bushfire. Uh, what was the story around that? Yeah, the helicopters, uh, they have this, uh, the heli tankers as they call them, they have a capacity to hover over a lake and they drop this uh, suction pipe and they can uh, suck water out of a dam and uh, while they're hovering there and uh, fill their tank and off they go and dump it on the fire. And they have a map which shows which um, uh, any no-go zone, um, uh, ponds or, or, or lakes that they're not allowed to take water from. And apparently there was one that contained sewerage, a uh, sewerage water um, holding uh, dam, and um, the it wasn't marked as a no-go zone, and so some 75,000 litres of uh, sewerage water was used to put out a fire out near Bullsbrook, um, which uh, caused a bit of consternation, as you could imagine, uh, and uh, yeah, the health department told people to empty their water tanks and to do a clean up and all that, but um, it's not quite clear actually whether the water was dumped onto any houses or whether it was uh, near the, near the perimeter. But uh, yeah, it's um, there's a humorous aspect to it. But for people who are directly involved, uh, it's um, it, it would be quite concerning because you've got to do the clean up and all of that. But I guess the bright side is that perhaps it might make the bush regrow a little quicker with that bit of fertiliser. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quicker regrowth and, you know, forget the birds flying over. Just don't look up if there's a helicopter overhead in those yeah. sorts of areas. <laughs> hey, great insights always. Just a fabulous update on what's happening in Western Australia. Peter Abetz, Western Australian State Director for the Australian Christian Lobby. And for listeners, you might want to keep up to date with the in being informed about the issues 
issues as they are developing, uh, not only in WA but in every state and territory around Australia, you'll be able to find some good resource at acl.org.au. That's the uh, website address for the Christian Lobby, acl.org.au. Peter Abetz, thanks so much for updating us once again today on 2020. My pleasure to be with you, Neil. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.